Every good mobile game needs a good mobile input. So this is the result of our today's tutorial. We will have a mobile joystick, a mobile button and a touch field. So if you wonder uh, that I already did this in the past, yes, but back then I used the asset from the asset store and they updated this. And unfortunately it does not work anymore. So I created my own ones. So let's start. This is our current scene. Uh, we will disable the character right now and we create a 3D object, a cube. And this cube will be used to move around. First up you download the asset pack, then you go to import package, custom package, then you will find this package and double click it and you must import everything that's in the folder. If you've done everything right, there should be a folder named mobile joystick and you got a couple of folders here, for example, one for exam one example scene. In this example scene, you will have as a mobile buttons and a test scene. We will build this right now. Some materials, these are only used for the example scene. Um, they are not needed right now. Some prefabs and we will use these prefabs right now to create our own input. So I create a canvas and set the canvas to scale with screen size, type in my full HD resolution and the matching by 0.5. I will just select all these three, drag and drop them on the canvas and there we go, you already see the mobile input is there. And we have a script folder with three scripts um, one for a button, one for a joystick, one for a touch field, and some textures. See, textures are used for the mobile input. Uh, you can use other textures or sprites if you want. So, you should make sure that the button is on the very bottom. The joystick is here, the joystick has a joystick script and the handle. You can set the reference to the handle if you want. If you do not want it, uh, the script will automatically take the image that is underneath the parent and here is just one image so it should work. The touch field is just an image and a touch field script. Um, if we set the alpha up, you see the touch field is, oh wait, so there we go. The touch field is just a big image that is completely transparent. And the button is just the button script and the button itself is this little image. To actually see the input, we will mark our cube and add a test script to it. The first thing that you should make sure is that you add the using Ditsu Games mobile a joystick to it. Then we add the joystick, the button and the touch field as fields to our class. Now we could just drag and drop the joystick to the joystick and the button to the button and so on to just have the references in our class. But I will use a different method, so I will set them as protected. And in the awake method, I will just say, okay, find object of type joystick and it will automatically find the joystick in our scene. The difference is you will find them here by code and make sure if you use this method that you only have one joystick in your scene because this is the only way this will work perfectly. Okay, let's update the position of our box. Um, I will just indent this a little bit so that we can see what it will do. So we will set a complete new position every frame and we will take the last position X and Z and add some components to it. So we will add a vector, uh, create a vector three X, Y and Z. And the X position is the joystick X is normalized. So this is the input um, X. So the X input and the Y input. Just multiply it by the delta time and a speed factor. I choose a speed factor of 3. Um, the Y axis is some kind of a jump. You already seen it in the intro. So if the button is pressed, um, the box will be 2 units away from the ground, otherwise 1 unit. 
Next up, the touch field. For the touch field, I just call rotate on the transform and I will rotate the object around the up axis and um, the angle is a touch distance x. I will do the same with a y value, but this time I will use different axes so that we can actually see what it will do. And there we go. We can move the box, the box can jump in some kind of way and you can rotate the box. So make sure that the touch field is not blocking anything. For example, if the touch field is on the very bottom, it means that it's on the very top on our game scene and I can't click this button here. I can just move it and rotate it. So make sure that the button is here. To finish this tutorial, uh, let's take a deep dive into the, those three classes. So the joystick um, has the handle as a public variable and this handle is a reference to the handle in the scene. The handle range is one parameter on the joystick. You see it in the editor here. For example, if I set it very tight to 0.6, you can't nearly move the handle. If I set it very high, for example, to two, you can move the handle very far from its origin. Then you have two very important um, properties. The input vector is just the input vector as it is. Uh, it's not normalized and the axis normalized is the input vector normalized. And normalized means it's just uh, one or zero. So the input vector has always a magnitude of one. Next up the button. The button is pretty straightforward. If the pointer is down, it's pressed. If it the pointer goes up, it's no longer pressed. And the last thing is the touch field. The most important thing is the touch distance. This is a delta in every frame that your finger is moving and a Boolean that says, okay, this touch field is pressed or not. Thanks for watching. I will push everything to the Git repository. Check the link into the description um, and there you can find my GitHub repository where you can download everything I showed you right now.